Welcome back to the special edition of Indianomics. Our guest is uh, Dr. Subara, the Governor of the Reserve Bank of India. Well, uh, Dr. Subara, now to the fiscal deficit. Uh, you know, you have assumed an inflation of 5.5 uh, uh, average and growth of uh, GDP of 5.7. Nominal GDP then will come to around 11%. The GDP, the budget has obviously assumed 13% uh, 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 nominal GDP growth. So all their fiscal deficit calculations are based on that. Their tax revenues are based on that. Do you think that there is going to be a, a problem of uh, meeting the fiscal deficit target because the revenues will undershoot as well? Would you not worry that uh, even in the trajectory of subsidy correction, the April diesel hike has not come? So we have not seen you read the Riot Act on fiscal deficit uh, this time around. But both these things should worry you, shouldn't it? Well, uh, we've said that we've used the phrase the continued commitment to fiscal consolidation. It's not as if it's entirely absent okay. in the document. It's still there. Okay. Now, coming to the more substantive issues about uh, this our fiscal consolidation has been revenue-led. To the extent that growth is slower than projected in the budget, revenues would go down. To that extent, there would be an impact on the fiscal consolidation roadmap and the outcomes for this year and the management for this year. So should our uh, projections uh, be the actual outcome, the government will have to take some uh, midterm correction. But what is giving us confidence is that the finance minister said several times over that uh, he is treating that 4.8% as a Lakshman Rekha that he will not breach. So we are hoping and expecting that he will take corrective action should that be called for. On the second question about the uh, okay. correction of the administered crisis, of course this year, this month has been uh, a default month and uh, I can guess the reason why but I do not know whether it uh, foretells a long-term trend. What I believe they've done from my discussions is that uh, uh, because global prices have come down, the adjustment have differed. So a discussion that they would have had at the end of the cycle, uh, they've brought that forward. Uh, okay, but it's not a good thing. I, it would have been better if the programmed correction had taken place as indicated. But regardless, we're hoping that they will pick up on this uh, next month. Was that one of the uh, uh, considerations, uh, one of the fears that has made you so cautious in your tone uh, as to, you know, my future space is limited because others are not keeping their word? Well, certainly not about keeping the word, but certainly the uh, correction in administrative crisis, both the what's been already announced and prospective mm -hmm. of coal and therefore of electricity. Uh, they're all uh, uh, variables in our inflation calculation. Not so much that uh, we have doubts about the government uh, fiscal consolidation resolve, but about the factors that could undermine that. Okay, uh, uh, one more word about the monetary policy and then I'll come to the customer related issues. Uh, you know, you, you have given us a wholesale price index uh, target and trajectory, but uh, you have referred to the CPI target. I mean, if WPI was your only target, then at 5% by September, you have a lot of headroom to cut rates. You're not doing that because CPI is in double digits. Will we ever evolve into getting some targets from RBI uh, in, in the form of CPI as well? Because that leaves us blindfold. Uh, you know, you're looking at that number, you're not giving us a trajectory, and even uh, the com committee of economists are failing us. They are not able to give us any data in terms of how this will move, and why is the damn thing so much different from the WPI? <laughs> now, first let me correct this impression, which is that uh, we've solved the WPI inflation, which you seem to suggest in the first preface to your question. We've not solved it. WPI inflation is still above the threshold level, and there are upside risk factors, that, as I've indicated earlier. Given that on the CPI, of course, it's in double digits, 10% uh, plus for the last, uh, last year, it averaged, I believe, 10.2% or something like that. It's still quite high. You know the difficulties that we have in shifting completely to CPI for policy purposes. I do recognize that most central banks use CPI. Using CPI as an objective or a target for inflation is the best practice. But we are unable to do it because we have no reliable measure of CPI that captures economy-wide pressures. 
the new CPI and that we started tracking since January 2012, about 15 months now, doesn't have a long enough history. But as it becomes, as with a flux of time, as we say in bureaucracy, and uh, with that inflation index getting some history, I think we can gradually shift to CPI. But that will take some time. All right. Uh, that's about uh, the macroeconomy. Now I want to uh, shift to RBI. I'm waiting RBI. with bated breath. Okay. <laughs> okay, to RBI as banking regulator. Okay, let me preface by saying that, uh, you know, when you uh, speak about uh, the economy, uh, you are a hard taskmaster. You want certain standards of inflation. You, are, you, are, you read the riot act to the government when it comes to fiscal consolidation. When it comes to the banking sector, somehow I think the Reserve Bank has kid gloves. Uh, you know, for instance, uh, the, the expose that, uh, I mean, that, that is obviously comes to the mind. Uh, one would have expected stronger language at least. Uh, what is going to happen? You, you are not even going to put the report in the public place. Shouldn't the customer and the general public have some right to what kind of wrongs have been done? Maybe it was just brazen talk. Maybe the filters would have caught the cash transactions. You have admitted that the cash and the suspicious transactions were not even reported. If you put two and two together, there is a wanton uh, effort, uh, a complicity to uh, you know, disregard the law. And the report will not come in the public place. Will some heads roll? Will your penalty be just that five lakh rupees? Uh, you know, some hard decisions are called for. What are you going to do? Well, first of all, I don't want to preempt what, actions might, what action might be taken, what the uh, systemic improvement will come in the way. There's a lot of things that have to come uh, in course of time and uh, sooner rather than later. But your characterization that we treat uh, our regulation with kit gloves, I think is unfair. You know, I believe that uh, banks do respect the central bank's regulation. In fact, some bank CEOs have told me after we went for inspection following this expose that they have learned enormously from the Reserve Bank's uh, um, investigation into this. Okay. Now, as far as the, this expose itself is concerned, we cannot go by how the media pictures this. No, certainly not. We've got, to, we've got to go by an objective assessment of what's gone wrong, to what extent it's gone wrong, to what extent is the management responsible, to what extent are the staff responsible, and to what extent is it confined to specific individual banks and to what extent is it endemic across the system. And that's something that we are trying to assess at the moment. And we will certainly take action not only against those banks which are part of the expose, but across all erring banks. And more importantly than the action that we take is the systemic improvement uh, that we will introduce. And I'm confident that uh, this expose has added value both into the institutions, into the Reserve Bank, and more importantly to the public. And you know, the best safeguard for protection of the financial system I've learned is public awareness. And this exposure certainly has helped in that direction. Okay. No, I